From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is Thai Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's show, Coach O speaks about the big victory for the Thai Cats over the BC Lions on the weekend. James Butler talks about having another dominant performance, except this time it was personal against the former team. And TSN's Matthew Shinetti breaks down the Thai Cats' victory over the weekend. And we also look ahead to this Labor Day classic matchup with the Argos. It's Monday, August 28th, 2023. I'm Braden Neville, and this is Thai Cats Today. Analysts around the league thought this was going to be a blowout for the BC Lions on the weekend. Betting lines had them at a 10.5 favorite, but no, no, no. The Tie Cats were not having it Saturday night. They put the league on notice with a dominant victory over the BC Lions in Vancouver, handing them their first loss of the season on home turf, and they looked pretty dang good doing it, doubling them up. The Tie Cats securing the dub 30-13. to So much for that 10.5 spread. If you bet on the Tie Cats, you made some money. All three units made big plays when it mattered. The offense was getting touchdowns. The defense was getting crucial turnovers. The special teams played excellent. This was what the Tie Cats needed, and they looked like a team that wanted to make a statement. And they did just that, starting off this second half of the season with a bang. Coach O has been talking about this team having to make plays. And he spoke about getting that decisive victory to kick off the second half of the 2023 campaign. Um, just can't really say enough about the coaches and their prep. Just everybody all week. Uh, this was a complete organizational win. Made a change. decision to come out uh, a little bit early after practice. Uh, I can't say enough about all three phases uh, of the situation. And to give our defense a rest, we kept them off balance. We were able to run the ball pretty effectively consistently and keep them off the hill. Scott called a great game and the players executed it. Uh, and then, you know, obviously we were able to turn the ball over a little bit or take it away, I should say. And uh, it just, it proved what it proved mm-hmm. nice for us. Yeah. Well, I can just say this, that, you know, he's one of those backs when you feed him, he just gets a little bit warmer. Um, I, I just love that. We, we stuck with it there. I mean, every, there was a few tackles for loss. Uh, there, but it didn't it didn't deter us, right? They, you know, they were changing things up on us, keeping them off balance. But I think um, just keeping them off balance there, and uh, you know, not turning into a drop back pass game really helped Taylor. And then I thought we made some big catches, especially coming up off our goal line there, down the stretch. Yeah, well, it's really what's what's working that day. You know, I can't speak for other teams. I can just say that right. we're trying to find our identity as we're getting a little bit more healthy. We're using our roster a little bit. In a, in a different way at this point in time, and uh, so yeah, they've won some big ball games. They, uh, you know, they're very exciting. You know, high-powered offense, and I thought we we controlled that for the most part. You know, they had a few drops, but I thought we were able to get some pressure and not let Vernon out. You know, there. And then again, it, you can't say enough about the offense. Just controlling the ball. And then when we had to punt, you know, because the offense was able to get the ball out of there, you know, it was, you know, we pinned them down there. So Vedvig did a great job there. And obviously Legs had a great bounce back game when we needed to get some points. And so Mark stepped up for us. Uh, You know, we're just going to enjoy it. You know, you do want to use things like this for sure. But, you know, we're playing, you know, the best team in the league. And, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full there. But, you know, it's – it's exciting. That's all I can tell you. Right. I mean, I, I can't really tell you what it's going to mean. I can tell you that we're going to prepare, we're going to line up, and we're going to expect to win like we do ever since uh, you know I've been here. That was Coach O, and the mindset now switches to that big Labor Day game that has so famously been a tradition between the Thai Cats and the Argos a week from today at Tim Hortons Field. James Butler had a huge game against the Lions. He was getting it done on the ground. He was getting it done through the air. He made it clear that it was personal playing against his former team, and JB made a statement on his first touchdown. The guy looked like he was trying to dunk the ball between the uprights. He got so high off the ground, leaping for the touchdown. He added another one through the air. He was the top running back on the CFL's honor roll last week and looks like a front runner, let's be honest, to be back on the honor roll again this week. He finished the game with 118 rushing yards, a rushing touchdown on the ground, and he had 36 receiving yards and yet another touchdown through the air. James Butler mentioned how it felt to put up a big game against the former team out West. Surreal. 
for real. You know what I'm saying? Like coming into it, I was there was so many nerves. I was trying not to play the game before the game. I was nervous. I was anxious. I was excited. I was mad. I was angry. I was happy. But uh, that 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 was crazy. That was that was wild. I, I can't can't describe that feeling. Man, my offensive line just felt. I feel like Coach Scott really uh, had a great plan this week. And then the offensive line really executed it. And, you know, and just me just trusting my reads and trusting those guys to block down the field. Those guys really got my back. So I got to give it to those guys. Anytime a running back has a big game, it's never it's never an individual feat. It's always, you know, all 11 guys doing their thing too. Yes, sir. I feel like for me, it's, uh, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. So obviously we started a little slow. slow and I feel like this league is about continuity. And I'm I feel like we're finally starting to grow that continuity. This is a brand new team. Finally starting to, to love on each other and 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 figure guys out and play for the play for the guy next to us. So if we can just continue to stay close, stay locked in. And you know, this game shows that we if we if we really come and everything's executed on all three phases, like we're gonna be a tough team to beat. That was James Butler. It's about that time I throw to my guest to break down Saturday night's game, TSN's Matthew Shinetti. Matt, thanks for joining me. The Tie Cats. A 10.5-point underdog heading into this game, and they shock people around the league, securing a victory over BC in BC, doubling them up 30-13. to 13. Matt, what are your thoughts on the Ticats' performance? I think two things, um, Braden. It's one, there, will, there are games that occur during a season that legitimize not only the work that happens in the meeting room, but the intentional messaging that coaches put together throughout a season. That's the game. That's that, that is going to be the game at least going forward that um, yes, everything happens week over week. It's a new, it's, you know, what you have to go one and zero every single week, but to go into BC, a team that many of us in the media side would have considered in that upper echelon alongside Toronto and Winnipeg, Mm -hmm. who, when BC turns it on, you can see the way that they get their offense rolling, the way that defensive line can pressure teams and to go in, and not just win, but have as close to a complete game as this team has had is going to be something that Orlando Steinauer, Mark Washington, and now Scott Milanovic are going to point to and say, yeah, we can we can compete. We can we can not only compete, not only can we lead, but we can beat any team on any given day. And certainly it's going to be exactly the kind of messaging you want ahead of Labor Day. Mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, especially when you're looking at offensively to see – so much discussion so long this season has been about utilizing the talents of, of, of James Butler and to see him have the kind of game that he did over hundred yards rushing to see the, the energy of which that he played to see the defense. Um, it's, it's one of those games that you say, okay, like this is not put the odds aside, put the point differentials aside, put all of the, the numbers aside and just say this tie cats team, this tie cats team can compete. And mm. For sure. Um, I uh, I feel I feel if you're a Tie Cats fan, especially n- looking at Taylor Powell and the accelerated education that he's had to have, absolutely. Yeah. That's the that's the kind of motivation that you're going to want to have going into a huge huge week now. And and you mentioned James Butler. He has a performance like that against his former team in BC. Why do you think he was able to be so successful? He he did it the week before. He had a great game against the Elks, and he does it here against a very strong uh, BC defense. I'm, I'm I'm always very careful when I when I discuss the impact of coaches because it, it's it's mm-hmm. not meant to diminish the accomplishments or the reputation or the talents of the coaches that that came before. But moving into um, this era now of Scott Milanovic is uh, heading up the offense in in Hamilton, he brings not only his experience in the CFL, but he brings the experience that he had in the NFL with Jacksonville and with Indianapolis. And that's not to say that he has a heightened sense of things because he spent time in the NFL. It's just when coaches go to different places, their playbook expands Mm -hmm. and seeing the talent that he might've had now in James Butler, I'm not going to compare him to Jonathan Taylor and say, well, you know, he may, maybe he, maybe he saw that maybe Milanovic saw things. No, I'm not going to make some outrageous statement, but a coach comes now in, with maybe a greater greater understanding, seeing the abilities of the players that he has around him, he says, "You know what? I have a wrinkle for this. I have a check for this. I have a mat- I see this matchup. I think I can go ahead and exploit this. I see what I have on my 
my offensive line and I think I can put these players in positions to succeed. And I think that's what you're seeing with James Butler. Um, and to see the confidence afterwards, which yeah. James Butler spoke, um, how much he wanted that game. That's going back to that, that point I meant about buy-in. There has to be that kind of, to use, um, to use the, 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 um, you know, the term synergy uh, mm-hmm. between both the execution and the scheme and practice and the want to, that's what is ex- exactly what you saw in, in Butler's performance. So going forward now, um, James, the Argos are going to mark James Butler. And, and, and to know, especially the kind of game that the Argos just had against Calgary, where that defensive line essentially shut down after, yeah. yes, a, uh, kind of a firecracker first half. I think you're really going to see a treme- that line of scrimmage matchup uh, between what the Argos can do on their defensive line and what the Ticats are trying to do in their run game. Uh, that's going to be a matchup to watch next week. Oh, and I know everyone around Hamilton and Toronto is, is so pumped for this Labor Day classic and just to be a part of it for me this year, watching it on TV throughout the years and now to actually be there for it. I, I mean, it, it, I know it's a week away, but we've been thinking about it all season. Another guy who played excellent, Taylor Powell, he comes out in this game. He just looks so much more comfortable. Do you think that's a lot to do with the Scott effect, or, or is it him coming into his own here in the league? I think the one thing about Taylor Powell that every every player, every coach at Tim Hortons Field has told me is that he is someone who demands a lot of himself. He has a great work-life balance. He has a greater sense of things outside of football, but he wants to win, and he wants to compete. And when his pads are on, when his helmet is on, or when he has the notebook in the meeting room and in the film room, he wants to compete. And he wants to win and he wants to get better. He has said it over and over and over again. And I remember kind of asking him, um, there's that humility with him as well. I, I asked him on air if he felt like a bit of a veteran with all the things, all the changes, all the things he's had to learn on the fly. And he goes, well, that might be a bit of a strong term, but I don't think it's, I don't think necessarily that it's out of the realm of, 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 of really being something that to describe the last few weeks for him because he's had to act like a veteran because he yeah. hasn't had time to sit down and be like, okay, well, you know, I can, I can take this learning. I can take this lesson. He's had to deal with the situation where he's coming into a team that has had unfortunate injuries, especially at the quarterback position that there is an expectation, whether you want to call it expectation or pressure, whatever it is like Hamilton this season, the Ticats want to win because they're hosting yeah. the great cup because, because that, that pursuit of the great cup trophy is, is, is such a profound motivating factor in, in the city. And Taylor Powell has come in and he has a composure about him that you can't deny. Scott Milanovic said the same thing. And when you pair a young quarterback like that, who has the want to desire and the abilities with a coach like Scott Milanovic to say nothing of certainly what he, what he had under Tommy Condell, who, who Taylor Powell was very, very effusive about when talking about the, the impact he's had with Orlando Steinar, with that, with that quarterback room with Matthew Schultz and, and Bo Levi Mitchell, you have a quarterback who has such a self-awareness that he's going to get better, mm-hmm. that he's going to to take the little notes. He, he said it to he said it to myself, and I know my coll- colleague Farhan Langer also on the weekend, that he's going to want to look at every single game for what it is and say, okay, I can be better here. This little detail, I can be better there. And that's the kind of approach mentally, but also physically that Scott Milanovic is going to love because I watched him with Trevor Harris and I watched him with Zach Caleros and I watched him with guys who have a desire and a want to. Every mm-hmm. quarterback is different. Every approach is different. Every personality is different. But you have to have that desire and want to. And knowing Scott Milanovic as I do as a coach, to say nothing of Orlando Steinauer, when they see guys who have that buy-in desire, that's a leadership quality that they know even for a young quarterback, that's just going to trickle down to the entire team. And for sure, you have to feel good for, for Taylor Powell coming into that game, uh, knowing that certainly a lot of, a lot of people – we're not expecting that result no, for, him yeah. to come out of, for him to come out with a win and to, to bridge it to your point about Labor Day, things are different in Labor Day. Get ready for a big right? time because there is nothing that, 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 that expresses the uniqueness of the CFL quite like Labor Day and quite like Labor Day in Hamilton. Um, it doesn't matter what the records are. It doesn't matter what's going on. That is as close to a college rivalry, iron bowl, egg bowl, near championship game atmosphere that you're going to get because there's this a desire in Hamilton that if nothing else doesn't matter what you do <laughs> the rest of the 17 weeks that that game you beat the Argos and coming off of that coming off of that win the way that 
you know, the Taylor Powell was, you know, 18 for 23, over 200 yards, efficient, effective. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of game he's going to sit back and be like, yep, yeah, no, I, uh, I know I can produce and I have the confidence now to lead in a big moment. And I want to get to Labor Day in just a second, but I can't skip past the defense played excellent in that game and allowing BC to only get three points in the first half. So what did you see from that group? It seemed like they were able to get turnovers, get stops, and we barely really saw that BC offense on the field. Yeah, when you look at when you look at the the post game report, you're going to see all the names uh, in terms of the tackles, in terms of the stats. I should say not the report, but the stats. You're going to see. Simone Lawrence, Richard Leonard, Tunde Adelike, Jameer Thurman, Casey Sales, like all the guys that you want to lead, all the guys that you want to be first in contact, you're going to see all those guys. And that's what you saw. And that's sometimes tackles can be, sometimes tackles can be that kind of that, that strange stat because you could tackle one yard or you could tackle 20 yards down the field. But when you, mm-hmm. when you know, when you look at that score line, you look at the tape and you know that your leaders on defense were the ones that were making the plays that's something that Mark Washington and Orlando Stein are going to point to and say, okay, our guy, if nothing else, our guys at a critical time are leading. And it's, it's, it's that overall theme that, that, that you want to, to see out of the tie cats right now, because it hasn't been the kind of season everyone was expecting. It hasn't no. been a great start to the season, but you come in the back half, you come into the last nine games, you come to that point of labor day. And if, and if you see that kind of, buy-in from your guys you're going to you're again to 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 overuse that word that sense of confidence and sense of self-belief but no doubt about it especially when i look at a player like jameer thurman like he yeah. plays and casey sales these are two guys who are coming in being tie cats who you know that they were going to fit in but to see the performance that, that they had especially jameer thurman that's yeah. that's the guy that, that that that's the guy that you're going to go ahead and say all right He's a tight cat. He's he's got he's got black and gold in him, mm-hmm. um, and, and and quite honestly, and what is likely going to be a slugfest, and 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 also um, uh, there are going to be tremendous plays on both sides of the field. You can't you can't help but but feel confident uh, in every aspect of what the tight cats want to do because yeah. and, and and even. Um, you know, special teams as well. Uh, you know, Jeff Reinbold went on one Twitter was talking about Mark Leggio after his disappointing great game. bounce back game for him. Yeah. And, and and that's and that's the point, right? Every, all the all three phases. The Ticats come out of BC going, looking at themselves in the mirror after beating what what was perceived to be one of the best teams in the league, saying, "We won in their house. We beat them with the travel and the expectation, and everyone thinking that hey, if we lose this game, our season's over, and so on and so on." And now they go. And they can face the Argos, and a win against Toronto changes the entire complexion of what the East looks like going into the fall. One last question, Matt: How exciting? Well, you, you touched on it a lot there, but just how exciting are these Labor Day games? This rivalry between the Argos and the Tie Cats, and for the Tie Cats to be coming into this game with some confidence, coming off a win like that, it almost makes this matchup more interesting than it may have two weeks ago. Say if they were coming off a loss to the Elks, you might have thought, oh. The Argos might just come in here and, and dominate this team, but now it looks like we might have our have ourselves a game on our hands here. I think you're going to see. I have been I have been blessed to be to have spent since 2011. Uh, yeah, 2011, I think. Um, over 10 years, I've done I've done Labor Day games in Hamilton, and it is uh, as soon as you drive on Nikola Tesla and you come off. And you see everybody in the, and, and it's, it, it, the hairs are standing up on, on, on end when I think about it, but you're driving towards Barton mm-hmm. and you can see the tailgates happening. And it's like, you know, those people have been out there since 7 a.m., if not earlier. Some people would, yeah. you know, the stories of people breaking into the parking lots just so they could, <laughs> this, so they could start getting after her early on. Like that's that's what it is, and and, and I implore you and, and anyone who's coming, anyone who's listening to this, yes, the stadium is where you'll end up. But walk the streets, walk mm-hmm. Melrose, like w- walk around, look, look around the different homes and what it means to the people in, in the Stipley to, 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 to host, not just one of the, like one of the significant games in the CFL calendar. If you think about it in the tradition of Canadian slash American football, whether at this level, college level, NFL, whatever, it doesn't matter. This is one of these significant games. This is, a, this is Absolutely. a history. This This is one of those, this is one of the games that, you know they don't get everywhere in in, in in a place that you don't 
that it doesn't happen anymore. You know, we think about stadiums and big parking lots and, and, you know, big tailgating and that's all good, but to have a, to have a game of such significance right inside a neighborhood where it has been for years and years and years. And know there are people who have taken generations of their family, generations of friends and, and they celebrate that day, whether it's, you know, Argo suck and all of the color and the <laughs> extracurriculars and the, you know, not safe for work words and <laughs> yeah. thrown from the stands. It does it like it's, it's a significant moment. But it, it's it, this season. I think it's going to be a special game, not only because of all the pressure I talked about with that that Hamilton has certainly put on their shoulders and they're facing this season. And maybe it's pressure from the outside, but I imagine those inside kind of feel it too, especially as you get closer to Labor Day. But this is a good Argos team. It's mm-hmm. a very good Argos team. Chad Kelly is is really making a push to become one of the faces of the league. He certainly, for the first nine ten weeks has put himself front and center. I mean, this is a guy who literally stares at the camera every time I speak to him and goes, go Argos. Like that's all, (laughs) that's what he says. And he's bringing that. So if you're a Ticats fan, you have a villain, like you have someone that you want to beat because the Argos are that good. And if you're, and if you're the Argos, you're looking at the Ticats going, you know, I look at Sean Oakman when he came to Hamilton last time they played early in this season, he was wearing an Argos Grey Cup t-shirt mm-hmm. with Hamilton hearkening back to when they, when the Grey Cup was in Hamilton in the mid nineties and, and, and knowing that the Argos <laughs> want to go back to back and they want to go back to back in Hamilton. Like it's, it, this is so cool. This is, if, if you're, if you're not pumped up for this game, I mean, it's like, like, do you even have a heartbeat? Like yeah. this, this is how awesome this game can be. And, yeah, I can't. I can't wait. I, I and I and I and I consider myself for the job that I do the luckiest guy in the world to be able to know that that come three o'clock next Monday I will be on the sidelines at Tim Hortons Field, watching the Lancaster Bomber go over, hearing the noise of an Oski Wee Wee, mm-hmm. knowing that the Argos are going to be pumped up, knowing that there's going to be probably scuffles and fights and Argos <laughs> stuck and all this and all this energy like like kickoff right now. I'm ready to go. Matt, you just honestly, if you weren't fired up for this game before that speech you just gave right now, then you 100% are. Great breakdown. I am so psyched and I'm so pumped up to see you at the field next Monday. Matt Chinetti, thank you again for coming on the show today. Appreciate you, my guy. Appreciate you.